Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to give you a walkthrough of my favourite western swing tune, Take Me Back to Tulsa. <laughs> This is a request for Record Twang. Now I suggest that Record Twang is not his actual name uh, unless he is uh, maybe the son of um, Frank Zappa or some such person. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yes I love this tune. I've been playing it for many years although the, the tune I played for many years was a, uh, a strange and twisted version called Take Me Back to Belgrade. But that's another story. Um, Written by Tommy Duncan and Bob Wills, and there are great versions by Merle Haggard, by George Strait, and by Asleep at the Wheel, all of which are worth uh, listening to. Um, I'm going to first of all give you a very simple version, the, the version that I used to play before I really cared how I played it, and that is like this. One, two, three, four... <laughs> So that is the what uh, serves as the intro and as a fiddle break. Um, I think you could probably manage perfectly well without the third line and the, the third line I uh, will come to uh, because it is very problematic in itself as to how to actually play it. But that's, that's a very simple version and um, that would be, uh, it's no problem to play it like that. Um, it's just not totally authentic. So, uh, for this video I took the trouble to actually uh, try and work out what Bob Wills actually played. And uh, it may, it's not obvious to everyone, but Bob Wills, the fiddle player, did not play the improvised uh, swing solos on any of his uh, recordings. He played the melodies, the melodies like this. And he had a very specific and uh, a very charming way of playing, uh, which involved a lot of uh, open string drones and a lot of four finger drones. And getting these right is the trickiest thing about imitating his playing. Uh, also quite a lot of grace notes. So I'm going to go slowly through the, the Bob Wills version of the, the first two lines to start with. So we're starting off with open A, open D. First finger, third finger for the next note. Then keeping your third finger on, a little grace note on the open A. Fourth finger, doubling. And if you find like me that your fourth finger gets in the way of the A string, then you have to bring your wrist right, right up and round and that gets around that problem. So the second line... Now that C sharp is a, um, an interloper. If you prefer to play... Um, like that. Um, it would still sound a bit odd, but it's a lot better than the C sharp. But if you're used to hearing that C-sharp, then I do like that, actually. Um, now, the third line is where the problem comes. So, the original is, is this. Which, you may notice, has half a bar missing. And um, Bob Wills is noted for his, what is called, maverick sense of time. <laughs> Uh, which is to say, he didn't really count and he didn't really add things up in the way that a lot of musicians do. 
And I'm absolutely certain that everyone in his band probably hated the fact that he did this because it just made their lives a lot harder. But there was no way that he could challenge Bob Wills and um, I think on one occasion someone did and was fired on the spot. So the way that he played it was the way that they played it. Uh, which leads you to the question, uh, as a 21st century fiddler in a 21st century band, should you follow uh, the sloppiness of that aspect of his playing or should you straighten it out? And uh, it's an interesting question, and I would say if you live in Texas, then you should certainly play the way Bob Wills did, because in Texas Bob Wills is still the king. But if you live in uh, Tottenham or Teddington, then everyone in the band is going to uh, absolutely hate you for insisting on putting in a half bar where a half bar doesn't belong. And no one in the audience is ever going to notice uh, whether you do it or don't do it. So I would go with the flow and straighten it out. So the straight version of the second half would be... Like that. So I've just uh, added half a bar to straighten it out. Um, I haven't gone to the trouble of banding the box in that half bar, so I'm going to give you now the, the straightened out version with the backing. alternative to that version is to simply leave out the third line and um, that's a pretty good option I think. <laughs> okay, um, when it comes to the verse, uh, Bob Wills plays a slightly simplified version of that. He plays... <coughs> main difference being that at the end of that line he's following the vocal melody closer. Um, for the verse you could also drop out completely or you could do just staying in the background which is not something I believe that the original fiddlers ever did but that's something you could do. You could do shuffles. and that again would work. How exactly you approach this depends quite a lot on the size of the band that you're playing in and how authentic you want to be. Uh, if you're playing this in a three-piece band then you want to add as much as you possible in the background even when you're not soloing or doing the intro. Uh, but obviously with a large band you don't need to play all the time. So so far we've done the intro and talked about what you can do behind the verse. I would suggest in the chorus that you do stop playing and that you actually join in the singing. Even if you're not a good singer or any kind of singer, it's a, it's a very simple thing to sing and uh, I, I believe it adds a lot to the enjoyment um, of yourself um, by singing along with a simple chorus like this. And for the audience I think it looks good if, if everyone in the band is actually singing the, uh, one of these choruses. So just stop playing and start singing just for that bit. Um, next, I'm going to look at the original Louis Tierney solo. Uh, so I'm going to give you something pretty close to his original. One, two, three, four, one. <laughs> So it's quite a sweet little solo and it's pretty straightforward, there's, there's nothing really flashy there but if you wanted to learn a solo that one is as good as any. One of the things he does is um, for all of the second line he's taking a very simple run and 
and that's a good general idea uh, if you're short on ideas to to take a simple uh, scale that because it twists it go, kind of goes up and down and up and down and up and down that will that one idea can take you through four bars without having to think very much let's try that solo up to speed and with the backing So that's, uh, that's one approach to the solo. You could, of course, improvise your own solo, and I'll give you a little solo at the end. Uh, one more thing I want to show you is the, the lick that is used by Asleep at the Wheel um, on the Ride with Bob version of this. It's a really good lick. Um, it's one, two, three, four, one. <laughs> show you that with the backing. So that's a good one to put in at the end as you're going around the chorus a couple of times. Uh, I think that Asleep at the Wheel may be the band that popularised this idea of doing uh, those kind of licks behind verses or choruses or other people's solos, and it's a really satisfying way of approaching it. I'd welcome uh, opinions on this, uh, I, but I don't think that Bob Wills ever actually really did this. And it's possibly a thing that comes from Duke Ellington, and when they did long solos they often used to have a kind of a horn riff going on in the background and it works really well in Western Swing. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you would like a copy of The Dots, then do subscribe and send me an email and I'll send you the PDF. If you are interested in getting hold in one go of all of my 300 PDFs, then do think about joining me on Patreon and that is one of the many benefits you can get on there. I'll play you out with a solo and I'll see you again soon.